I think the two most important reasons are, firstly, that actually every state has a different relationship with terrorism, and some states um, don't really see it as much of a threat because it may be far away, it may not seem to affect them. States, I'm thinking like uh, Zambia or Malawi, terrorism is not on their politicians' everyday agenda and therefore it's not a legislative priority. The second reason is the importance of sovereignty for many African states and a sort of perception amongst the political classes especially that being dictated to um, in terms of legislation, in terms of what kind of legislation they should be adopting, is almost an infringement of that sovereignty. And so they are reluctant to sort of cede control in such an important area to the continental body. This has to change. Terrorism does not stop at borders. Boko Haram doesn't say, oh look, here's an imaginary line in the sand. Um, we're going to not do anything past that line. Borders are essentially irrelevant to many organizations um, that we consider terrorist groups. Boko Haram is a good example. Um, they're operating in uh, northeastern Cameroon, and they're also operating in um, Chad by some reports. So borders aren't stopping Boko Haram, so the response to Boko Haram also cannot be stopped by borders. We have to be able to have a strategy that takes, you know, looks at it holistically um, and makes sure that the same rules apply in one country and in the other country um, so that no country becomes a safe haven for any terrorist organization. The EU is in a difficult position when it comes to getting states to implement because it can't really you know, punish states or reward them. It doesn't really have an effective mechanism except to just encourage them strongly, which it is doing. Now, that doesn't mean it can't do anything. What the AU can do is uphold its side of the bargain, which currently is not, it's not really doing as effectively as it could. Um, in particular, the African Center for the um, study and research into terrorism based in Algiers is severely underfunded and understaffed. I think they have just 16 staff members out of a budgeted 25. So we really need to make sure that organizations such as this, which are designed to be the sort of uh, nerve center of the anti-terrorism operation in Africa, are fully funded. Um, and another one is the Peace and Security Council, which is supposed to take the lead in um, developing and enforcing this continental response is also underfunded and understaffed. So I think what the AU needs to do is really get its own house in order first and then it can start expecting member states to comply.